Good morning, folks, and welcome to the Hutch County Community College Culinary Complex here. Uh, our governor will be up here announcing some new exciting news uh, to us, and uh, I'm going to keep my remarks, it's a little chilly, in the 20, 25-minute range, so we won't get... <laughs> Uh, I, it, this is a nice place for me to come to. You know, Journal Square, right over here, uh, is the center of Hudson County. Not just Jersey City, but Hudson County. This is where it all started, with Peter Stuyvesant leaving, uh, leading Dutch settlers into this area. And when I first came on, into on, to my job about 20 years ago, uh, then Dr. Gabert, Bill Netchett, and the board recommended that we do a statue and a park. Uh, Ward C, where we are right now, has the fewest parks in, in Jersey City, and that we would have a little passive park here in, in honor uh, of that. And it was at a time where nobody was building in Hudson County. There were vacant lots, abandoned hotel rooms, uh, it was a disgrace, and uh, it took a lot of time and a lot of effort to lead the charge in order to get Journal Square going. And now you see what has happened. When nobody else was building here, Governor, we were. And that has led not only to the culinary school across the street, but new campuses in North Hudson and a spattering of buildings all over Journal Square. We're here today uh, to talk about and learn about a new educational initiative coming out of the Murphy administration. He'll take the lion's share of the, uh, the credit, and he deserves it, but our legislative team uh, also, I see Senator Cunningham sitting next to the governor, uh, our commissioners, not freeholders anymore, commissioners have helped us by approving this all along the way. I'm a teacher, 25 years, and I get excited when I see things happening for the youth of our county, and particularly Hudson County with its heavy-duty load of new immigrants and new people finding the, the uh, golden door. I want to thank Dr. Reber. I see some of the members of the Board of Directors for the college. Uh, it is the hardest working, non-paying board in Hudson County. And they take a lot of pride in what they're doing, and they ain't finished yet. Uh, my job will finish up by introducing, I'm going to say this wrong, is Annie? Oh, is the lady uh, here, a product of Hudson County Community College. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lenis Rodriguez, and I'm a CCOG recipient from Hudson County Community College. And this is currently, thank you. This is currently my last year of the culinary program of this college. It's more than an honor to, to me to be here today and be part of this incredible college and receive financial support to continue my education and hopefully fulfill my childhood dreams to become a Michelin star chef. As an immigrant from the Dominican Republic who came here in 2016 looking for a better education and after tireless to looking to find a work, to find a job and affordable education, I feel lucky to have found Hudson County Community College. Three years ago, I enrolled in their ESL program and I'm currently to work to complete my associate degree in culinary arts. Hudson County Community College has provided me with invaluable opportunities and programs as well as resources and final support. The support of staff, professors, and counselors paved me the way towards academic success and ensured that I received the necessary assistance to receive an education regardless of my economic status and my Ill illegal status. I experienced firsthand how community college are critical to young people and working adults in order to have a meaningful career. And with CCOG, 
we are able to receive a high quality education when it otherwise will have been out of reach to its high costs. I'm grateful and blessed to be part of CCOG program. And I want to thank all the dedicated people who have worked tirelessly in order to create opportunities like, like this for students like me throughout New Jersey. It is now a pleasure for me to introduce Governor Murphy this morning. Thank you. Great thank job. you. Really great job. Thank you. Let's hear it for Selene Rodriguez. How cool is that? Give me a quick sec here to get uh, myself organized. Good morning, everybody. It is great to be here uh, in Jersey City and Hudson County. I want to start by thanking the County Executive Tom DeGees. Not only great remarks and great leadership from testing to vaccinations to infrastructure to transit and everything in between, but you've got a great soundtrack on your phone. Um, if, <laughs> for all those reasons, I love you. Thank you to Selene Rodriguez for that wonderful introduction and thank you as well for so perfectly showcasing the Community College Opportunity Grant Program that it is working for you and thousands of your fellow students across our state and also representing the extraordinary Dominican community in our state. Let's hear it one more time for Selene. And by the way, it is for the students who follow in your shoes uh, here at HCCC and elsewhere, hardworking New Jerseyans who need the support that a Community College Opportunity Grant can provide to attain your goals, then I am proud to sign the legislation today making this program permanent. I want to thank uh, Mr. President. Uh, there was a time for the past four years, I wish that were the case uh, in a broader sense, but Chris Reaver, a dear friend, thanks to you and your, your team, including members of your Board of Trustees uh, for hosting us so graciously and for everything you do. I'm also honored to be joined by our Secretary of Higher Education, the newly confirmed Dr. Brian Bridges. Brian, great to be with you and the Executive D Director of the Higher Education Student Assistance Authority, a name that just rolls off your tongue, my friend uh, David Sokolow here. Uh, now, as this will be a bill signing, it wouldn't be anything without the legislators who championed the effort to ensure that the Community College Opportunity grants that Selaney and so many others depend on won't go away. So I'm thrilled as well to be joined uh, by Hudson County Zone. Uh, the Senate Higher Education Committee Chair and a great leader, uh, Senator Sandra Cunningham, is with us. Senator. Another Hudson County uh, proud son and great leader, and this is not abstract to him because he works here, Assemblyman Nicholas Chiravalati. Uh, Nicholas, great to have you uh, as a senior administrator for Hudson County Community College as well as a terrific, um, uh, a terrific uh, Assemblyman um, from the Assembly as well. We have uh, on the assembly side the chair of the Higher Education Committee, great leader, Assemblywoman Myla J.C. is in the house. Uh, we also have Assemblywoman Angela McKnight with us. Angela, where'd you go? Bless you. And God bless your sister. And she remains in our prayers. Um, I don't think they're here, but I also want to give a shout out to Assembly Majority Leader Lou Greenwald, Assemblyman Dan Benson, Senator Teresa Ruiz. Uh, to them, uh, hats off and thanks. I also want to acknowledge this guy, Aaron Fitchner, Executive Director of the New Jersey Council of County Colleges, who has been a tremendous partner and ally. And I should note that our proposed budget would increase state aid to community colleges in the state by $5 million. That's the first increase in more than a decade. So ever since, and to everybody else here, thank you. I saw, I thought, sunny day, Tom. The good news is we'll be in the sun. We, <laughs> As a testament to the great development of Jersey City, we are in the shadows. Ever since uh, before I sought office, I have been clear in my belief, one that I know is shared by everyone here, that our state's 18 community colleges play a vital role, not just in the economic lives of so many of our residents, but in the econ economic, sorry, in the educational lives, but also in our economic future. Real careers take place uh, take root, rather, in places just like HCCC. Futures take place and, and take shape, or frankly, for many returning older students, are reshaped and lifelong connections are made. From day one, our commitment as an administration has been to ensure that no deserving student should be shut out of a, shut out of a future that a community college 
education can help because of a tuition bill. And three years ago, in the first budget of our administration that we proposed, I called for the creation of a new program that would close the funding divide for thousands of low and moderate income students at our community colleges, making their educations tuition free, the community college opportunity grants. It took a while for the concept to gather broader support. We stood our ground knowing that this program was too important and too game changing to leave in the cutting room floor. And with the legislature, we succeeded in that first budget. In the first class of community college opportunity grant scholars, 5,400 strong was born. In each successive budget, we have maintained the community college opportunity grant program because everyone could see that it was working. Students who would have either had to slow down their degree pursuits, and that, that was the story, and you guys, Aaron, you know this, and, and, and Chris and the rest of the team here, it was, not, it was in some cases uh, completely abandoning their plans, but in many cases stringing it over, over seven or ten years because they had to work that second or third job and couldn't actually afford to go to school to, uh, could, uh, full time. Um, and, and, so, and it was all because of, the, of a lack of tuition money. They were able to stay in the game. Uh, they were able to continue their study, studies and either enter the workforce after graduating with a good job or to take the next step to keep reaching for a bachelor's degree. So fast forward to today, this academic year, no, no longer 5,400, but now th more than 13,000 deserving community college students are receiving the opportunity grants and they're living up to that promise of a tuition-free education. In, in just three years, because of our commitment with our legislative leaders, the number of students has nearly tripled. These grants are more than living up to the word opportunity, especially over the past year. When so much uncertainty has been thrown into the lives of our students, this program has ensured that they can remain on track. Now the task is to ensure that this educational lifeline is never cut in any future administration, and that's why we're here today. So today we make community college opportunity grants not merely a matter of doing what is right to advance the dreams of our next generation, but we make advancing the dreams of our next generation a matter of state law. How's that sound, huh? And by the way, if you're not familiar with it, and this is something the more folks had a chance to look at it, the better it looked. I'm not sure that's always the case in life, but it is the case in this particular situation. The tenants are very similar to the original grant program, um, although we've upped the eligibility over the past couple of years. So as long as you've got a family income, adjusted gross income of $65,000 or less, that you're a New Jersey resident, and by the way, open arms to uh, as well our, as our uh, undocumented brothers and sisters to take part in this program, that it's a last dollar program that you prove that you've, Dave, and unless I say this otherwise, that you've proven you've exhausted other, other uh, sources, and that you're a student in good standing, this is wide open. And importantly, and Senator, I thank you in particular and Mila for this, is it is it will never go below $65,000 adjusted gross income. We do have the ability, if the money is there over time, to continue to raise the ceiling so that it brings in more and more students over time. In this bill, which I'm honored to sign in a few minutes, not only won overwhelming support on its way to my desk, but it also garnered 30 sponsors or co-sponsors. That's one quarter of the entire legislature. You know you got a good idea at that point. On Tuesday, at my budget address, I said the following. I'll quote myself. But even as we continue to confront the pandemic's challenges, we cannot and we will not allow our state to sit still. We won't allow New Jersey to be pulled backward. This is the time to look ahead. Our students can't afford to sit still, and neither should we. We need to stand shoulder and to shoulder with Solani and the 13,000 more whose futures are brighter today because of our commitment to them and march into our future together. And that is what the Community College Opportunity Grants are all, of, all about. I'm incredibly honored to be here today. I'm incredibly honored to sign this into law in a few minutes. But before that, we have a, a handful of distinguished leaders who, who we need to hear from. Allow me to introduce a, a colleague, a new colleague, the Secretary of Higher Education, Dr. Brian Bridges. Brian, come on down. Thank you, Governor. I have to take this mask off because otherwise my glasses get fogged up and I can't read what I have to say. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, and thank you, Governor. 
President Reber and the Hudson County Community College campus for hosting us today for this momentous occasion. Many thanks to our colleagues at the Higher Education Student Assistance Authority, the New Jersey Council of County Colleges, and our legislative partners here today who have been instrumental in ensuring the success of the Community College Opportunity Grant, or CCOG as you will hear me refer to it, since its inception. I also want to acknowledge our incredible students whose ambition has driven us to prioritize public investment in college access for years to come. Today culminates what has been a momentous week for higher education investment in the state of New Jersey. This week alone, New Jersey directed almost $100 million in new funds to support student success, improve college affordability, and ensure the higher education sector is putting students first. The governor's fiscal year 2022 budget proposal includes an additional $7 million in the CCOG investment for a total of $27 million, and that is what we are here to enact and celebrate today. Today represents a huge win for college affordability and a transformative moment in our state's history. What began as a pilot back in 2018 will now be here to stay, offering thousands more students equitable access to affordable post-secondary opportunities. CCOG eliminates the financial barrier of attending college for students with adjusted gross incomes of $65,000 or less many of whom otherwise may not have been able to attend college, particularly first-generation students and those from low-income backgrounds. Many of these populations were also the hardest hit by the pandemic. Throughout my career, I have heard gut-wrenching testimonials from students who didn't think they would be able to go to college simply because they did not have the funds to do so. And that is the tremendous value that CCOG offers New Jersey's families who may think higher education is not an option for them. CCOG offers students and their families one of the most powerful forces in life, and that is hope. Hope that they have affordable options to set them on an upward trajectory. With the CCOG, New Jersey students who meet the criteria have accessible and viable options for launching their lives into a different stratosphere. Over the past three years, CCOG has supported the varying paths that today's students take to and through community college, focusing on expanding opportunities not only to new students, but also returning adult learners, many of whom are juggling employment, education, as well as other, other responsibilities. And at a time when many families face significant financial strain, we maintain our commitment to ensuring that every resident, regardless of life circumstances, has the opportunity to obtain a high quality credential that prepares them for life after college. Today's bill signing signals an important step to forward in the state's efforts to build a skilled workforce, match talent to industry needs, and increase our educational attainment goal of 65 to 25, that is 65% of working age adults obtaining a high quality credential by 2025. The only way we can achieve that is to acknowledge the reality that higher education remains unattainable for far too many. New Jersey's post-secondary attainment rate is currently 57%, which exceeds the national average of 51%. However, students of color are not attaining at rates close to that. Hispanic attainment is 27%. American Indian attainment is 31%, and African American attainment is 34%. We must also recognize that today's college students reflect different socioeconomic backgrounds than in years past. More than a third are 25 or older. Almost half are first-generation college goers, and more than 40% are students of color. We owe it to them and all students in New Jersey to provide free community college benefits that will, in turn, lead to improvements in our state's overall financial health as we look to our students to build our long-term economic resiliency. All of these historic dedicated investments make our priority for higher education clear to invest in students' education today and plant the seeds of lifelong success. As New Jersey readies itself to become an even stronger and fairer state in a post-COVID world, CCOG will remain an affordable pathway, thanks to Governor Murphy and our collaborative partners here today who recognize the value in investing in future generations. Thank you all for your commitment to ensuring New Jersey students are offered equitable opportunities for, year to come, for years to come, and I look forward to the rest of the program. Governor? Thank you, Brian. You know, Brian and I, when we first met 
we bonded over, Brian comes to us from the United Negro College Fund, we bonded over accessibility and affordability, and that is the theme of the day. I'm gonna keep things moving just because it's uh, sub-zero uh, here. Uh, he's already been uh, acknowledged the executive director of HESA, David Sokolow. David, come on down. Thanks, buddy. Governor. Oh, it's cold. So I'll be brief. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you so much, Governor Murphy, and thank you for your steadfast vision over the last five years to put tuition-free community college on the top of the agenda in New Jersey, and for your leadership as governor in turning that promise into practice. And thanks also to the legislators who sponsored this crucial bill to codify that vision and turn it into a permanent state law and especially thanks to our chairs of the higher ed committee in the Senate, Sen Senator Cunningham, and in the Assembly, Assemblywoman J.C. Through your leadership, we will increase students' awareness of this vital opportunity to earn a high-quality college credential tuition-free. And awareness is the theme today. I'm looking forward to continuing also uh, a strong partnership with Secretary Bridges and his staff and with all of 18 uh, community colleges and Dr. Fickner with the leadership. This journey began three years ago with a pilot test of the brand new Community College Opportunity Grant Program in spring of 19 and on to the expansion into its current scale in the last two academic years and we have learned a lot about how to make this uh, financial aid initiative work and also how to help students succeed. To date CCOG awards have filled the gap for more than 25,000 students whose tuition and covered fees exceeded their Pell and TAG and other grants and scholarships. These last dollar grants make community college tuition free by saving students from paying out of pocket or using student loans an average of more than $3,000 per year. With today's new law, New Jersey has the most inclusive college promise program in the nation. This program covers part-time and full-time students. It covers New Jersey Dreamers and it covers all students at all stages of their journey, not only dependent students who recently graduated high school, but also independent working adults who are more than 55 percent of the CCOG recipients. The law enacted today also includes an important provision with second chance for adults returning to school after they had prior challenges. Now the 13,000 students this year receiving CCOG are really just the tip of the iceberg because the tuition free guarantee message reaches tens of thousands of more students who are eligible and helps them find out about financial aid they didn't even realize was possible. And as a result, we are expanding the horizons and the sense of possibility for many students and families who may have been deterred by that published sticker price for tuition. Over the past three years, it has been incredibly inspiring for me to meet so many students um, like Sulaini um, and so many others across the state uh, whose college dreams and career aspirations have been enabled by tuition-free community college. Our work is not done, and I look forward to continuing to work with all of you to make college more affordable and help New Jersey's residents. Thank you. Thank you, David, and for your leadership. Um, quick news flash, not why we're here today. We've put in the budget a proposal to make a similar step in the context of our four-year state colleges and universities for the first two years. Similar attributes, similar adjusted gross incomes, etc. And look forward to deal, working with the legislature on that. It takes a village. Uh, we don't get done what we get done in this state without great legislative leaders. We've got a few of them here today to hear from. Please, first of all, help me welcome Jersey City Zone, Hudson County Zone, the chair of the Senate Higher Education Committee, Senator Sandra Cunningham. have to follow your lead and pull my mask down just a little bit. Uh, thank you so much, Governor, for being here today to honor us with your presence. Thank you to see so many people who are here and talking about this program. 
I am very proud of it. We're very proud of it. We're very happy about it. You know, I was sitting inside a little while ago waiting for the governor to arrive, and there was a gentleman there, and I don't see his face here. Oh, here he is over there. And we started a conversation, and he said to me, this could be a game changer. And I said, absolutely, that's exactly what this is. This is a game changer. This is an opportunity to give people the kind of life that they want to live. It all begins with an education, and it all cannot go any further than that. First start your education. We're so fortunate that young people and older people and just anyone who wants an opportunity to make a change in their life can do so is a wonderful feeling. I do have to say, and I'm going to sit down because I'm freezing. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> I forgot my gloves and my hats. Um, I was at an event, um, and I think uh, Assemblyman Chevarati was with me. We were at a, a, some sort of breakfast, and all of a sudden he disappeared, so I went looking for him. And he was sitting at a table full of young women. I don't think there was a man there. There were young women, and they were raving about this program. They were mothers. They were uh, people who didn't have children. They were just people who go to this school and were so happy that they're getting this grant. And it was. For them, it definitely was a game changer. So that was the nicest feeling that I've had in a while because it's always nice when someone tells you, you did something to make a difference in my life. You did something to make me better. That's what it's all about for all of us. So I'm just so happy that we're here and we're able to do this. And I will be praying that it's just the beginning. Thank you. Bless you, Senator. I'm not sure where the gentleman is who you were speaking to about the game changer. I'm very happy to continue the rest of the program inside where you and the Senator uh, were meeting. <laughs> Myla has agreed to drop all vowels from her remarks to save time. Uh, so we got, again, great leadership in both chambers. Uh, we, please help me welcome the chairwoman of the Assembly Higher Education Committee, another great leader, Myla J.C. Hello, kiddo. I too have the foggy glasses problem, and you'll be happy to see these are my remarks, and I will stick to them. Um, the number of students who leave post-secondary education institution with staggering debt and no degree to show for it has dogged me since I became chair of higher ed. I had the privilege of working with my friend, then OSHI secretary, and now chief policy advisor, Dr. Zakia Smith Ellis to accomplish what was then an elusive goal of making community college debt free. This initiative is one of the governor's signature accomplishments, and I acknowledge that again and again, and its codification into law today will ensure that future generations will have opportunities that were never before available. Due to the ever increasing cost of college attendance, our county colleges have long been a pathway to obtain a degree and transition to a four-year institution. But they are so much more. They offer certification programs and training opportunities for young people, for adults looking to change careers and training uh, and skills to improve the quality of their lives. They are a gateway to opportunity. Today's law will throw the doors wide open for so many for whom this was a previously unattainable and indeed unthinkable option. Every so often, we legislators have the chance to be part of legislation that changes lives. And today is one such day, and I am so honored to be a part of it with the governor, my colleagues, and all of those who make this happen every day. It's a game changer for sure. Thank you so much. 
Nyla, I remember the first time you and I met when it was cold, dark, and lonely for me, and, and this is the sort of stuff we talked about. And thank you for mentioning Zakia Smith-Ellis, Brian's predecessor, our chief policy advisor. She was the pioneer on this program three years ago, and she deserves a shout out. Last but not least, speaking on behalf of not just Angela, but other colleagues in the assembly, Hudson County Zone, Hudson County Community College's Zone, its vice president of external affairs, Assemblyman Nicholas Giervato. So the governor made sure that he uh, announced I was the last speaker, so I'm spending between you and uh, getting in warm inside. I'm going to be very brief. I just, uh, first of all, welcome to Hudson County Community College, okay? This is a fantastic institution. I think it's the leading community college in the state of New Jersey. And we're fortunate to have uh, Chris Reber as our president in a short period of time. Chris has stepped in and begun to transform the culture of Hudson County Community College, building on his predecessor's success, but also growing uh, this school and this institution. And we're uh, very happy to be here. I will tell you that as vice president, uh, of this college. I meet people every day whose lives have been impacted by this grant, Governor. When we talk about 13,000 students uh, receiving this grant, in Hudson County alone, we have over 1,000 students. 1,000. Everyone met one of our stars, uh, Suleyni. We also have Warren. We have Jasmine somewhere. We have Coral somewhere. We have, we have four representatives here. When we talk about being a game changer, and being transformative, it is not just for these individual students, it is for their families. Many of them are parents, and they're going to college and being examples for their children who are going to pursue a higher ed degree. Many of them are caregivers for their parents. And when people talk about, when the, when the governor originally proposed this idea, okay, I was a big fan, but they did have some distractor, detractors. People talk about students need skin in the game. If you meet a student at any community college in the state of New Jersey, or you meet any of our students here at Hudson, you know they have skin in the game. They work full-time jobs, they take care of their loved ones, and each and every day they show up and they put their best foot forward. So with that, Governor, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're proud to host you. Let's get this thing signed. Nicholas, thank you. I got to amplify that point about skin in the game. You wouldn't be here if you didn't have skin in the game. Your life is skin in the game. And, and thank you for making that point. With that, I'm going to go over and sign the bill. Um, we're not going to do the normal stuff where we all stand and hand the pens and whatnot. Aswan, where are you, buddy? Aswan here is going to oversee appropriately COVID-19 pandemic protocols with the, honor, the, uh, the special pens that we'll be handing out. And again, it's great to be here. Executive Director of HESA, David, congratulations. We're in her town, great leader, Senator and Chairwoman Sandra Cunningham. <laughs> Assemblyman Nicholas Chiarvalahi is in the house. Nicholas, thank you. We 
mentioned him, the president of the New Jersey Council of County Colleges. Dr. Aaron Fichtner is with us. Aaron, bless you. Assemblywoman, please keep her in your prayers. Hudson County Zone. Angela McKnight, Angela, bless you. Chairwoman of the Assembly Higher Education Committee, Assemblywoman, a star, Myla J.C. Representing the Hudson County Community College community, its president, Dr. Chris Reber. Woo! Yeah. This one is an abstention. He wanted to be here today. A, a, a guy who really helped lead on this and so much else. Assemblyman Dan Benson. Make sure you get that from Dan, right? Hold on. The Community College Opportunity Grant Program is now the law of the land. Woo! Thank you, everybody. Stay warm. Stay safe. <laughs>